I call the member for Fisher. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I began my career as a builder, but in the 16 years before my election to this place, I was a barrister. There's one very important principle that you learn when you practice law. That is the independence of the judiciary. The value of a court or an arbitrator is that they can act independently. Where there are important questions to be decided and there are strong views on both sides, an independent umpire can weigh the evidence and make a decision without fear or favour. That is why the opposition leader set up the Fair Work Commission review into penalty rates. But now he presents us with this bill to consider. How his tune has changed. The explanatory memoranda to this bill contains the sort of Orwellian doublethink that only this Labor Party under this leader are capable of in modern politics. A Labor Party that is not a shadow of the Labor Party when Prime Minister Keating and Hawke uh, ran uh, the, uh, the Labor Party. The explanatory memoranda claims seemingly with a rhetorical straight face, that this bill preserves the independence of the Fair Work Commission. Independence, Mr Deputy Speaker. A bill that not only dictates to the Fair Work Commission what it can and cannot decide, that not only tells the Fair Work Commission that it can do whatever it wants, so long as it's exactly what the Labor Party tell it to do. No, not only that but a bill that retrospectively reverses a decision the Commission has already independently made. The blinding hypocrisy of the provisions contained in this bill are only matched by that of its mastermind opponent, proponent. I don't know why I am even surprised. This is exactly the kind of top-down, nanny state, nanny knows best world that the Labor Party are desperate to create. A human rights commission that tells us exactly what to think and what to say. A workplace relations system where the only voice to be heard and dictated to and by is the CFMEU. And a fair work commission that is legally obliged to agree with the Labor Party. That is the future that this government would be under a, an ALP government. I believe that this bill contains at its heart a contradiction just as fundamental as the contradiction inherent in preserving an authority's independence by shackling it to Labor Party ideology. The new clause 135A prohibits any modern award which would be likely to reduce the take-home pay of any employee covered by the award and retrospectively annuls any decision after the 22nd of February that would have the same effect. Well, I've spoken to a great many businesses and a great many business owners in my electorate, in Caloundra, in Mooloolabar, Mullaney, and all throughout the Fisher electorate, and they all tell me the same thing. That is that the crippling high penalty rates that they are required to pay on Sundays and public holidays prevent them from opening and limit the staff they can employ and reduce the hours they can offer. They tell me that without these penalty rates, they could offer more work to local people and would do so with great enthusiasm. So what effect of the new clause 135A? It would be to prevent employees under an award being offered more hours and therefore more take-home pay. It would prevent unemployed Australians from becoming employees under the award and getting any pay at all. The effect of this clause would be to limit the income and opportunities available to potentially millions of Australians. Why would the Labor Party want to keep small businesses closed on Sunday? My colleagues in the House and in another place have given us the abundant evidence that makes the answer clear. It is because their union mates want to be able to go on handing big business a competitive advantage by giving away their workers' penalty rates while potential competitors have to pay more. With small businesses shackled, the unions can preserve their own membership, grow their income and maintain their own power base. This bill, just like another well-known bill, tells Australians to, to their faces that it will stand up for their pay and that it gets stuck into them, selling them out to preserve union power. It is an absolute disgrace. 